So thank you. My name is AJ Rye. I'm the head of corporate development for Frequency. I've been at the company now for nine months, <clears throat> spent about a year at Takeda Pharmaceuticals, uh, 10, 12 years at Biogen and business development and M&A. <clears throat> so I'm going to actually start off the presentation with a brief overview from our co-founders, Dr. Bob Langer and Jeff Karp of MIT in Harvard. And I think this will give you a good overview of what they were looking for and what the company is about. And then I'll give a brief presentation on the company. What if we could take a different approach to treating tissue damage by studying what drives regeneration in the human body? If you look at nature, you find species like reptiles that can regenerate lost limbs. So we wondered if it was possible for humans to regenerate in a similar way. So we decided to look at one of the most active areas of regeneration in the human body, the linings of our intestine. Our intestines are always regenerating, producing an entirely new intestinal lining every four to five days, which is pretty amazing if you think about it. The key to this are the progenitor cells, which are in a constant state of replication, producing new cells for the lining. Progenitor cells can be found all over the body, and in many places they remain dormant. So we wondered what drives the intestinal cells to be so regenerative. We studied hundreds of molecular signaling pathways that each cell uses to communicate with other cells in their environment. And what we discovered were two key pathways that when activated would trigger the intestinal progenitors to replicate. In the lab, we developed small molecule drugs that triggered these same pathways and activated the progenitor cells to replicate. And what if we could activate these pathways in dormant progenitor cells? So we decided to try this on progenitors in the cochlea, which are a close cousin to the intestinal cells. And we found that when exposed to a combination of small molecule drugs, we were able to activate these normally dormant progenitors and cause them to replicate. And this is huge because these progenitors can regenerate cells called hair cells, which are in your ears, allowing us to hear. We didn't set out to discover a treatment for hearing loss, but by following the data and the science, we could see that potential. Now imagine if almost anywhere we find dormant progenitors, we could apply these same techniques and restore damaged tissue to a healthy state. The reactivation of progenitor cells could also have a profound impact on many different diseases that affect millions of people throughout the world. One of these diseases is multiple sclerosis. In MS, the myelination that protects neurons is damaged by an autoimmune attack. We are now able to target progenitor cells in the brain and promote the remyelination of damaged neurons and possibly delay or prevent symptoms from occurring. This approach has produced published human clinical proof of concept data. The progenitor activation platform is demonstrating huge potential, and this is just the beginning. Frequency Therapeutics, unlocking the body's own healing potential. So thanks for watching the video. So for me, the video is important for a number of reasons. Uh, one, Bob and Jeff did not start at the company <clears throat> as a hearing company. Uh, the company is built around a fundamental groundbreaking insight, and that is understanding the pathways uh, that activate these progenitor cells. And they've identified small molecules that communicate with these progenitor cells. They've done that with the intestine, intestines, and uh, they're doing it with other diseases, such as, as remyelination, alopecia, diabetes, and many other diseases. So just a very brief uh, background on the company. Uh, we are a PCA uh, company, and the goal is achieving native regeneration within the body using small molecules. Uh, we are in phase one. We're about to complete phase one in our hearing program, um, and we expect to start phase two uh, middle of next year or early next year with proof of concept data 
in three or four small studies in different hearing patient populations by end of 2019, and we hope to see a signal in one or more of those uh, studies. Um, we're also going after uh, PCA in a human trial and remyelination. There was some work done out of uh, UCSF on one of the uh, one of the chemicals that could uh, remyelinate, uh, ma making the OPCs uh, develop uh, myelin. <clears throat> and so we're going after that, and we expect to file an IND with a uh, combination and pr proprietary drug by 2020. And we are having, you know, multiple different research activities uh, in muscle, in uh, alopecia and diabetes uh, with small companies and partnerships with the DOD and the JDRF. Uh, the company is funded with $45 million from uh, funds like Alexandria Ventures, Morningside, and a few other funds. And we are actually in the middle and finally finalizing a Series B financing of about 40 to $50 million. talk a little bit about this. So one thing about this is this is an, uh, a new way of looking at progenitor cell, looking at new way of regenerative medicine. Uh, it's a new concept, but for us it's getting traction in the scientific community. Um, we're starting to work with folks at the Harvard University, at Scripps University, uh, to work on different types of diseases, such as remyelination, and muscle regeneration. So it is building, uh, I would say, a, an effort and, and, and getting momentum as a potentially new way of looking at how to do regenerative medicine. So, you know, what are we actually doing? So we've, in a nutshell, figured out how to hotwire the progenitor cells uh, and activate the dormant progenitor cells by really understanding the pathways. And the key for us is uh, going after two or three pathways and then developing small molecules. Usually these are small molecules that are off the shelf. Uh, they've been around for many, many years. And we use those molecules uh, to develop drugs where we get IP around the use as well as also NCE on the formulation to to develop these drugs and promote the progenitor cell activation. And it's all about asymmetric division versus forced differentiation. And to date, we have shown rodent ex vivo, rodent in vivo, and human ex vivo in hearing, remyelination, alopecia, muscle regeneration, osteoarthritis and GI disease, uh, specifically diabetes uh, type two, uh, you know, remarkable and, and solid uh, data. And in hearing regeneration, as I mentioned before, we're in phase one, we're about to finish phase one and go into phase two proof of concept studies. And that's gonna be three to four proof of concept studies with a data readout second half of the year. Remyelination is actually a program that the UCSF studied specific uh, drug. They showed that with this drug and activating the OPCs, they regenerated remyelination and showed some proof of biology. So we're gonna take that approach, license in key IP, and develop a proprietary formulation and take that into IND in 2020. There we go. So one thing, one thing Bob Langer and Jeff Karp always talk about, and we're kind of seeing this as we raise money and capital uh, from private venture funds is, our approach is safe. We're temporarily activating the, the native progenitor cells, so we're not seeing any genetic changes. And when we look at our, uh, our, our patients, uh, we don't see any of the drug in the blood. So 
we're pretty confident it's not having any impact on the body and, and potentially, as some investors have asked us, any toxic effect or proliferation of cells to cause cancer. It's using small molecules, so you're not taking out cells, you're not putting back in cells. So it's a revolutionary, revolutionary new concept. We're going after large, substantial markets. And importantly enough, it's scalable. It's known small molecules uh, with tox packages and low cogs. So for us, compared to the other ways of regenerative medicine, which requires complex uh, supply chain, high cogs, this could also be a game changer, not just from the efficacy standpoint, but from the safety standpoint uh, and cost standpoint as well. Slide nine just gives you another overview of our, what seems like we're doing a lot, but we're actually not doing a lot internally. We're focused on hearing regeneration, our, our uses of funds, about 80% goes to hearing regeneration. About 15% will go to remyelination once we close our Series B in a couple of weeks. Alopecia, I think, is actually sitting on the shelf until we get uh, an investor to actually invest in that. And then muscle regeneration and diabetes has gotten a lot of attention from the Department of Defense and Lee Rubin's lab at Harvard University uh, to actually push this forward for battle wound uh, victims as well as potentially diseases such as ALS and other, other applications where the muscle actually degenerates. Management team. I would actually point out on this slide, uh, the fact, beside the fact that David Lucchino's uh, uncle owns part of the Red Sox, uh, we have Bill Chin and Carl LaBelle, who are really leading the effort on the, on, the, on the research and clinical side. Bill Chin is the former CMO of Pharma. He came out of retirement and uh, is helping us kind of map out our whole research and clinical plan. Carl LaBelle was at Autonomy, which is in San Diego. We got him to come to Boston. He's run about 20, 25 clinical trials and hearing, and we feel confident that he has uh, the expertise to kind of operate and, and get this, uh, get us going. The last person there, Will McLean, believe it or not, he spent 10, 15 years just spending time on inner ear biology. I guess that's something that he has a passion about, the inner ear. So he knows everything about the inner ear biology and he runs a 15 person research center in Farmington, Connecticut, right outside of Hartford that just spends time in understanding the MOA. So as we move forward through the clinic, we understand why our drug is working and, and what can be done to optimize it. We also have a great regenerative medicine advisory board who are actually very active. Most advisory boards meet twice a year, get their stock options, and uh, once in a while give a press release saying, they love this technology. Uh, Bob Langer, Jeff Karp, and Siddharth Mukherjee, uh, uh, who also wrote a book called Emperor's, Emperor of All Maladies for Cancer, he, he spends quite a bit of time with us, uh, and it's pretty phenomenal. And Lee Rubin, of course, we meet every two, three weeks at Harvard. So just quickly on hearing, I know we have 50 seconds. This slide shows a healthy cochlea on the left, outer hear cells, uh, and inner hear cells. The outer hear cells are the amplifiers. The inner hear cells are what transmits to the brain the sound. When there's a noise damage to the hearing, uh, basically the outer and inner hear cells, uh, hair cells, get damaged. And what we know is that from this bone bank, uh, from the mass iron ear, this is a 47-year-old male. We tracked his hearing for a number of years. And before he died, he gave us his uh, cochlea. And what we learned is his hearing 
actually decreased as the hair cells uh, decreased. And what we also saw from that bone bank is he still had progenitor cells and intact hair cells and some missing hair cells. So we can, we can confidently say that our approach could actually restore hearing. Uh, and th that's it. I've gone over 15 minutes. And I will just end with, we have two other programs, MS for remyelination and alopecia, where we've grown hair on mice. Thank you. Thank you.